Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this hooded capelet out of crochet using an extended moss stitch. Some things you'll need for this tutorial are a crochet hook, I used a size N, a pair of scissors, some bobby pins or stitch markers, a yarn needle, and some yarn. I used this premium K plus C knit and crochet alpaca yarn in green. This is a super bulky weight yarn, so you can use any bulky yarn you like. I ended up using two and a half balls of this yarn, which comes in 130 yards, so just keep that in mind if you use a different brand. Because this project is made using super bulky weight yarn, it works up really quickly, so it makes for a great last minute gift. If you'd like, you could sew buttons to the front when finished, but I opted for a brooch. I used this mushroom one that I hand embroidered. Let me know if you'd like to see how I make these brooches in the comments. If you'd like a written pattern for this project, you can find one in my Ravelry store at the link in the description below. I'm going to begin my work by making a slip knot, then I'm going to chain 20 for the foundation chain. You can chain more or less than 20 if you like, just chain the amount that you want for the depth of the hood and make sure to use an even number. Now I'm going to chain one to count as the first half double crochet of the row. So I'm going to mark that stitch with my bobby pin. Then I'll half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Now for the rest of the stitches of the row, I'm going to chain one, skip one chain, and then half double crochet into the next chain. So chain one, skip this next chain, and half double crochet into the next one. The reason why I'm chaining one and skipping a chain in this row is because I'm going to be working a stitch into that foundation chain in the next row. So I'm just going to continue this pattern of chaining one, skipping one chain, and half double crocheting into the next chain until I get to the end of my foundation chain. So I've gotten to the last chain of my foundation chain, and I've half double crocheted into that stitch. Now I'm going to mark that stitch as the last stitch of the row on this side. This is going to make it easier to keep track of my pattern in the next rows. Now I'm going to mirror the stitches on the other side. So I'm going to half double crochet into the same chain on the other side of the chain. So I'm going to turn the work. Then I'm going to half double crochet into this same stitch. And just like on the other side, I'm going to mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side of the row. Once again, just to more easily keep track of the pattern in future rows. So now I'm going to mirror each stitch on this side of my foundation chain. So I'm going to continue to chain one, skip one chain, and then half double crochet into the next chain. So I'm going to double crochet once again into each of the same chains that I worked on the opposite side. So chain one, skip the next chain, and half double crochet into the next chain, which is the same chain that I worked into on the opposite side. And continue in that pattern until I get to the end of the row, where I'm going to mirror my stitches once again, since the first stitch counted as a half double crochet, and then the second stitch was another half double crochet, I'll half double crochet into the last two chains of my foundation chain. But in between those stitches, I'm going to continue the pattern of chaining one, skipping one chain, and then half double crocheting into the next chain. And I'm going to work all of my half double crochets into the same stitches that I worked on the other side of the row, mirroring those stitches.
Now I've gotten to the last two stitches of my foundation chain, so I'm going to half double crochet into each of those two stitches. And since I had a foundation chain of 20, I should have 20 stitches on each side of the row, and 40 stitches in total. Now each row is going to start with two half double crochets, just like I did in the last row. So I'm going to chain one to count as the first half double crochet on this side, mark that stitch with my bobby pin as the first stitch of the row, then I'm going to turn the work and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So I've started the row with my first two half double crochets. So the next stitch of the previous row was this chain one where I left a gap. So I'm going to fill that gap in this row by double crocheting into the foundation chain that I skipped when I made that chain. And I'm going to work my double crochet over the chain that I made and into the foundation chain. So yarn over pull up a loop into that foundation chain, and then double crochet. And now as you can see, I've filled the gap from the previous row. Now I need to leave a gap for the next row, so over that half double crochet from the previous row, I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to skip that stitch, and I'm going to work into the next gap of the row. So double crochet over the chain one and into the foundation chain that I skipped in the previous row. Now I've left a gap to work the stitch of the next row. I'm going to continue in that pattern through this whole row, chaining one for every half double crochet, and double crocheting over each chain one into the foundation chain below. Once I get to the end of the row, to the two half double crochets that I marked at the end of each side of the row, I'm going to, instead of continuing my pattern, I'm going to half double crochet into each of those two half double crochets. That's another reason why I marked those stitches, just to make it easier to remember which stitch to work my half double crochets into. So until I get to those stitches, I'm going to continue in my pattern of chaining one for each half double crochet and working a double crochet over the chain one and into the foundation chain. So chain one and then double crochet over the chain one into the foundation chain below. Now I've gotten to the end of the first side of the row, so I'm going to half double crochet into the half double crochet that I marked at the end of this side of the row. Before I go on, I just wanted to point out that since I have 20 stitches on each side of the row, if it gets a little tricky to see where this side of the row will end, just make sure that you have 19 stitches before making the half double crochet, because there's supposed to be 20 stitches on each side. So you can make sure that you're not adding a stitch by adding an extra chain or an extra double crochet by just counting how many stitches are here in the row before making the half double crochet. Another way to tell is that in the first row, before making the half double crochet, I did a chain one, which means that there should be a gap for a double crochet before making the half double crochet. So I know that I should be working a double crochet over a gap and not chaining one before working into the half double crochet. And that's going to alternate in each row. So if you make sure that you remember what you did in the previous row, that should tell you what you need to do for the next row. It's the same for the beginning of the row. As you can see on this side of the row that I haven't worked yet, there's a chain one next to my last two stitches of the row, the two half double crochets. 
So I know that in that chain, I need to work a double crochet. And in this row, the part that I've already done, you can see after I made my first two half double crochets, there is indeed a double crochet that I worked into that gap. So every time that there's a gap, you know that you need to work a double crochet over that gap in the next row. In the next row after this one, the opposite will be true since there's a double crochet here. I know that I need to work a chain one over that double crochet to create a gap in the next row. So that's just something to keep in mind to make sure that you're not adding or taking away any stitches. And once again, in order to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches, you can always count all of the stitches on each side and make sure that they add up to 20. Now I'm going to continue this row. I just did the first of the two half double crochets that are in the middle, so I'm going to mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side of the row. Now I'm going to mirror the stitches on the other side, so I'm going to half double crochet into the last stitch on this side of the row, and I'm going to mark that stitch with my bobby pin as the last stitch on this side, and now I need to mirror the stitches on the other side. So since on the other side, the last stitch that I made before making the half double crochet was this double crochet into the gap, I'm going to double crochet into the same gap on the opposite side, which is into this foundation chain here. So double crochet into that chain, and now I can continue my pattern of chaining one over each half double crochet, and double crocheting into each gap over the chain one and into the foundation chain. So chain one over the next half double crochet and then double crochet into the gap. And now you can see that that is mirrored on the opposite side. So I'm going to continue that pattern. Chain one, double crochet over the chain one and into the foundation chain below. So I finished the last double crochet on this side. Now I need to half double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. And here is what we have so far. Now each row is going to begin with my two half double crochets. So I'm going to chain one to count as the first half double crochet of the row. Mark that stitch as the first stitch. Turn the work and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Now in my last row, the first stitch after the half double crochets was this double crochet stitch. So now I know that I need to chain one over the double crochet. So I'm going to begin this row by chaining one, skipping that double crochet, and then working a double crochet into the gap just like I did in the last row. So I'm going to double crochet over the chain one into the stitch below. And now I've filled the gap from the previous row and left a gap for the next row. Now I'm going to repeat that pattern and I'm going to chain one for each double crochet and double crochet over each gap. So chain one, skip that double crochet, and double crochet over the chain one into the stitch below.
Now I've gotten to one stitch before the half double crochet at the end of this side of the row. So since that's a double crochet stitch, I know that I need to chain one before working into my half double crochet. So chain one and skip that last double crochet and then half double crochet into the half double crochet at the end of this side of the row. Mark that stitch with my bobby pin as the last stitch on this side. And now I'm going to mirror the stitches on the other side of the row. So half double crochet into the half double crochet at the end of the other side of the row. Mark that stitch. And now I'm going to continue to mirror the stitches on the other side. So here's the double crochet that's next to the half double crochet in the previous row. So I'm going to skip that stitch, chain one. And then I'm going to double crochet over the chain one and into the stitch below to fill the gap. And I'm going to continue in that pattern until I get to the end of the row where I'm going to make my two half double crochets. So chain one over the double crochet stitch, skip that stitch and double crochet over the chain one and into the stitch below. Now I've gotten to the last three stitches of the row. So the stitch before the two half double crochets at the end of the row is a double crochet. So I know now that I need to chain one over that stitch and then half double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. And here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to continue in that pattern. I'm going to half double crochet into the first two stitches of the row. So I'm going to chain one to count as the first half double crochet. Mark that chain, turn the work, and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Now in this row, I'm going to do the same thing. For each chain one, I'm going to double crochet into the gap. And for each double crochet, I'm going to chain one to create a gap for the next row. Since in the last row, the first stitch after my half double crochets is a chain one, I know that I need to double crochet over the chain one and into the stitch below. Now I've filled that gap. Now I need to chain one and skip the double crochet. And now I'll double crochet into the next gap over the chain one and into the stitch below. And now I've created another gap for the next row. And now I'm gonna continue that pattern until I get to my two half double crochets. So chain one for each double crochet and double crochet over the chain one into the stitch below to fill the gap. Now I've gotten to the end of this row, so I'm going to half double crochet into the half double crochet at the end of this side of the row. Mark that stitch with my bobby pin. And then half double crochet into the other half double crochet on the other side of the row. Mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side. And now I'm going to mirror the stitches that I just made on the other side. So the last stitch before I made my half double crochet was a double crochet into the gap. So I need to find the next gap, double crochet into that gap into the stitch below. Now I'm just going to continue my pattern of chaining one and skipping each double crochet. And then double crocheting into the gap over the chain one and into the stitch below.
Now I just worked into the last gap of the row and I have two stitches left in the row. So I'm going to half double crochet into the last two stitches of the row to mirror the other side. And here's what we have so far. And now you can see the pattern is starting to take shape. You can see how all of those double crochets break up the pattern of the stitches and almost give it a sort of woven look. Now I'm going to continue in that pattern until the hood reaches the length that I want. Just keep in mind that the first two and last two stitches of each row should be a half double crochet. The two stitches at the middle should also be a half double crochet. And then in between for each row, Every time that there is a double crochet in the previous row, I need to chain one and skip that stitch. And every time that there's a gap, I need to work a double crochet over the chain and into the stitch below. So I'm just going to continue in that pattern until the hood reaches a size that I like. And of course, remember that there always needs to be 20 stitches on each side and 40 stitches in total. The first stitch of this row is a double crochet, so I'm going to chain one and skip that double crochet, and then I'll double crochet over the next stitch, which is a chain one, and into the stitch below. And I'm going to repeat that pattern for about 18 more rows. The amount of rows that you add here should also be an even number, so that it lines up with the next step of the pattern. Okay, so now I've finished with 18 more rows, and here is what we have so far. And you can really see the pattern now that I've gone on for so many rows. Next I'm going to make the closure at the front of the capelet. To do this, I'm going to add 4 stitches to the beginning and the end of the next row. So to do that, first I'm going to chain 4 for the foundation chain of the closure. Then I'm going to chain one to count as the first half double crochet stitch, and I'll mark that stitch as the first stitch of my row. Now I'm going to turn the work and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Then I'll half double crochet into the next two chains. Next I'm going to half double crochet into the next two stitches, which is where the two half double crochets at the beginning and the end of the row used to be. The next stitch is a double crochet that I worked into the gap in the previous row. So, since there's a double crochet as the first stitch, I know that this row needs to start with a chain one to make the gap for the next row. Then into the next gap, I'm going to double crochet over the chain one and into the stitch below. Now I'm just going to continue my pattern of doing a chain one over every double crochet and every time that there's a gap, I need to work a double crochet over the chain and into the stitch below until I get to the half double crochets at the end of each side of the row. Now I've gotten to the last stitch before my half double crochets at the end of each side of the row, 
that last stitch is a double crochet, so I know that I need to chain one before I work into the half double crochets. So I'm going to half double crochet into the half double crochet at the end of this side of the row. Mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side, and then I'll mirror the stitches on the other side. So half double crochet into the next stitch. Mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side. Turn the work. And now since on the other side I started with a chain one, I'm gonna chain one over the double crochet next to my half double crochet. And then I'll double crochet over the next chain one into the gap. And then I'll continue the pattern of chaining one and double crocheting into the gap. Now I've reached the last three stitches of the row, the two half double crochets, and then the last double crochet of the previous row. So I'm going to chain one over that double crochet, and then I'll half double crochet into each of the last two stitches of the row. Now I need to make my four half double crochets on this side to create the closure on the other side. Since I want it to be perfectly symmetrical with the other side, I'm going to do this by creating four foundation half double crochets. So to do this, I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop into the same stitch as the last stitch of the row. Now this loop is going to end up being the foundation of the next stitch. So to make that foundation, I'm going to pull a loop through the first loop on my hook. Then I'll finish the half double crochet by pulling a loop through the three loops left on my hook. So now I've made one half double crochet and I have this stitch for my next foundation. So I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop into that stitch. Then I'll make the foundation for the next stitch by pulling a loop through the first loop on my hook. And then finish the half double crochet by pulling a loop through all three of the loops on my hook. Now I've got two half double crochets made so far, so I'm going to make two more in the exact same way. Yarn over, pull up a loop in that foundation chain. Create another foundation chain by pulling a loop through the first loop on my hook. Then finish the stitch by pulling a loop through all three loops on my hook. And then I'll repeat that one more time to make the last of the four stitches. Okay, now I have four foundation half double crochets to act as the closure on this side. In the next row, I'm going to incorporate these six half double crochets into the rest of the pattern that I've been working this whole time, my pattern of chains and double crochets into the gap. So I need to create a few gaps in these half double crochets while still keeping my first two stitches as half double crochets like I've been doing this whole time. So first, I'm going to chain one to count as the first half double crochet of the row. Then I'll mark that stitch as the first stitch using my bobby pin. Now I'm going to turn the work and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Now I have my first two stitches worked as half double crochets. Now I'm going to start my pattern of chaining and leaving a gap in my stitches. Since there's no gap in the previous row to work into, I'm just going to use half double crochets instead of double crochets for this part of the row. So first I'm going to half double crochet into the next stitch. And that's going to act as a double crochet in the next row, so when I make the next row, I'm going to chain one and skip this stitch, just like I would for a double crochet. And now the next stitch I need to skip, since I worked into this one. So I'm going to chain one, then I'll half double crochet into the next stitch. And once again, this half double crochet will act as a double crochet when I make the next row. Now I've done five stitches so far, my first two half double crochets, then this half double crochet, which will act as a double crochet in the next row. Then I've chained one and skipped a stitch. And then I made another half double crochet into the next stitch. Now this next stitch would be the top of my next half double crochet of the previous row, since I made six of them. So I'm going to treat that stitch as another double crochet, since that would come next in the pattern. So I'm going to chain one and skip that stitch. Now here's the next stitch, which is a chain. 
So over that stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet into the stitch below. Now I'm just going to continue my pattern of chaining one, skipping a stitch, and double crocheting into the gap until I get to the half double crochets at the ends of each side of the row. Okay, now I've gotten to the last stitch of the row, so I'm going to half double crochet into that stitch. Mark that as the last stitch on this side, and then mirror the stitches on the other side, starting with a half double crochet into the last stitch on this side of the row. Mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side, and then continue my pattern of double crocheting over the chain one and into the stitch below, and chaining one and skipping each double crochet of the previous row. Now I'm going to continue in this pattern until I get to the last six stitches of the row, where I'm going to repeat what I did on the other side to incorporate the last six half double crochets of the row into the rest of the pattern. Now I've gotten to the last six stitches of the row. So I'm going to continue in my pattern. Since the last stitch I created was a double crochet, that means that the next stitch, according to the pattern, is going to be a stitch that I skip and chain one. So now I'm going to skip that stitch and chain one, and I'll half double crochet into the next stitch. And in the next row, this half double crochet will act as the double crochets do. Now I'm going to continue that pattern and chain one, skip one stitch, and then I'll half double crochet into the next stitch. And once again, this half double crochet will act as a double crochet in the next row. Now I'll half double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. So now that I've incorporated all of those stitches that I added into the larger pattern, I'm just going to continue with the same pattern of making two half double crochets into the first two stitches of the row, and then chaining one for each stitch and double crocheting into each gap. However, in this next row, I'm also going to begin to increase to create the cape lip. So I'm going to show you how to increase in just a moment, but first I'm going to chain one to count as the first stitch of the row, mark that stitch with my bobby pin, turn the work, and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Now I'm going to work in my pattern, so I'm going to chain one and skip this first half double crochet that I said was going to act as a double crochet in the next row, then work into the gap with a double crochet. So I'm going to repeat the pattern into the first five gaps, and then on the sixth one, I'm going to increase. So first I'll chain one, then work into the gap with a double crochet into the stitch below the chain one. So I'm just going to repeat that four more times. In the next gap, I'm going to increase, and this is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to work my pattern two times into the same stitch. So I'll chain one, and then double crochet into the gap. Then I'll chain one more, and then instead of skipping the stitch and going into the next gap, I'm just going to double crochet one more time into the same gap. and that's going to leave us an extra gap in the row and two extra stitches. Now I'm going to repeat my pattern into the next two gaps, and then I'm going to increase again into the third one. And now into the next gap, I'm going to increase. So first I'll chain one to skip the next stitch, And then I'll double crochet into the gap, then chain one, and instead of skipping the stitch, work another double crochet into the same gap.
So now I have two increases in the row, and this is going to add four stitches to this side. Now I just have one more gap to fill in this row, so I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet into the gap. And then I have one stitch before my half double crochets, and that's a double crochet, so I'm going to chain one and skip that stitch, then half double crochet into the last stitch on this side of the row. I'll mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side of the row, and then I'll mirror the stitches on the other side. So I'll half double crochet into the next stitch, and then mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side. Now I'm going to mirror the exact same thing that I did on the other side of the row. So first, chain one, and double crochet into the first gap. And now I'll increase the next gap, just like I did on the opposite side. So chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next gap. Then chain one. And now instead of skipping the next stitch, I'm gonna double crochet into the same stitch. So now I have another increase on this side. On the other side, I did two more repeats before my next increase. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And now into the next gap, I'm going to increase. So chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet into the gap, and then chain one. And instead of skipping the stitch, double crochet again into the same gap. So now, just like on the other side, I have two repeats of my pattern in between both of my increases. So now I'm just going to repeat my pattern into the rest of the row until I get to the last two stitches where I'm going to half double crochet. Now I have three stitches left in the row. So I'm going to chain one and skip the next stitch, and then half double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. So now I've finished with my first increase row. In the next row, I'm going to continue to increase two times per row. So I'll show you where I put my next two increases, and then I'll show you how I worked into the increases in the previous row. But first, I need to chain one to count as the first half double crochet, turn the work, and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So I finished the first two half double crochets of the row, now I need to work over this next chain, so I'll double crochet into the first gap. And now I'm going to repeat my pattern of chaining one and skipping a stitch and working into the next gap. I'm going to repeat that pattern two more times. Now into the next gap, I'm going to increase again. So I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the gap, then chain one, and instead of skipping the next stitch, I'm going to double crochet again into the same gap. Now I'm going to repeat my pattern again into the next two gaps before I get to the first increase of the previous row, and then I'll show you how I worked into that increase. Now the next gap is the chain in between the two double crochets of my increase. So first I'm going to chain one and skip the first double crochet of the increase. Then I'm going to work over the chain one in between the double crochets, and then I'll double crochet into the same stitch that the double crochet is worked onto. So I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop into that same stitch, and pull the loop way up, and double crochet so that will fill the gap. Now I'm going to repeat my pattern again into the next stitch before I make my next increase. And now I'm going to increase the next stitch. So chain one, skip the stitch, double crochet into the gap, and then chain one, and instead of skipping that stitch, double crochet into the same gap. 
Now I'm going to repeat my pattern one more time into the next gap. And now the next gap is going to be the chain one in between the next increase of the previous row. So chain one, skip the first double crochet of the previous row, then double crochet into the gap, into the same stitch where the increase is worked in between the two double crochets of the increase. Now I just have two more gaps left in the row, so I'm going to repeat the pattern two more times. Now I'll half double crochet into the last stitch on this side of the row. Mark that stitch as the last stitch on this side, and then mirror the stitches on the other side. So first half double crochet into the last stitch on the other side of the row, mark that stitch, turn the work, and then I'm going to mirror the stitches that I made in the previous row. So first I'll double crochet into the first gap, then I'll repeat that pattern one more time into the next gap, and then I'm going to work into the next increase of the previous row. So chain one, skip the first stitch of the increase, work a double crochet into the same stitch as the increase in between the two double crochets. Now I'm going to repeat the pattern one more time before I make my next increase of the row. Then I'll increase by chaining one, skipping the next stitch, double crocheting into the gap, then chain one, and instead of skipping the next stitch, double crochet again into the same gap. On the other side, I worked four repeats of the pattern before making my next increase, the second of which is worked into the increase of the previous row. So I'm just going to do that into the next four stitches. Now I'll increase the next stitch, chain one, double crochet into the gap, then chain one more and double crochet into the same gap. And now I'm just going to repeat the same pattern into the last three gaps of the row, then I'll half double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. and then I'll half double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. Now I'm gonna to continue to repeat that same pattern, working two increases on each side of the row and four increases total across the whole row until the capelet reaches the circumference that I want. And then I'm just going to continue repeating that pattern, chaining one for each double crochet and working a double crochet into each gap. In each side of the row, I'm going to make two increases, just as I've done for the past couple rows, and for each of those increases, I'm going to offset it with the increases of the previous row, so that I don't put too many increases on top of each other. So I'm just going to continue to increase four times per row. Each increase adds two stitches to the row, so since I'm making four increases per row, I'm going to be adding eight stitches per row. So I'm just going to continue repeating that pattern, until the cape reaches the circumference of roughly my shoulders. Alright, I ended up just going on for four more rows. Now that the cape has reached the circumference that I like, now I'm just going to go back to my original pattern of chaining one for every double crochet and then double crocheting into the gap under the chain one without adding any more increases. And I'm going to continue working the original pattern until the cape reaches the length that I want. And after all of my rows of increase, including the four stitches that I added to the front for the closure, I ended up with 96 stitches total. So I'm just going to keep on repeating that pattern until I have the length that I want.
All right, I finished with seven more rows of just repeating my pattern, and now the capelet is long enough. So now I'm going to do one last row to fill in these gaps from the previous row. So to do that, I'm gonna half double crochet into each of the half double crochets I made in the previous row, and I'm going to continue to double crochet over the chain and into the stitch below. But then instead of chaining one and skipping each double crochet, I'm just going to half double crochet into each of those stitches as well. And that's going to fill the gap of the previous row without creating a new gap for the next row because there isn't going to be an next row. So to begin, I'm just going to chain one to count as the first half double crochet, mark that stitch with my bobby pin as the first stitch of the row, turn the work, and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Now the next stitch is a chain one, so I'm gonna double crochet over that stitch into the stitch below to fill the gap. And then the next stitch is a double crochet, so I'm going to half double crochet into that stitch. And now as you can see, I've filled the gap from the previous row, and I've worked into the double crochet without leaving a gap. So I'm just going to repeat that pattern through the entire row. Into the next stitch, since there's a gap, I'm going to double crochet over that chain one into the stitch below to fill the gap. And then into the next stitch, the double crochet, I'll half double crochet. And I'm going to continue that pattern until I get to the end of the row. All right, now I've finished my last row, and now each of my gaps is nicely filled in, and I have a nice straight edge at the bottom of the capelet. So now, to end the work, I'm simply going to chain one, cut off the yarn, I'm gonna pull the yarn through the chain, and tighten that loop, and now I just need to weave in the end using my yarn needle. And now my capelet is finished. I fastened it with my embroidered mushroom brooch and took it for a walk in the woods. I was surprised by how warm it kept me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button and share it on social media. If you want to support the channel, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash fairy rings. You can find a link to my Patreon in the video description, or you can leave a super thanks on the video right here on YouTube. You can also follow me or tag me to show me what you're working on on Instagram at LizFairy. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. I love the look of the moss stitch, especially in this yarn. It really does look like moss. I loved working with this yarn, and I'm excited to try it for other wearables in the future. Let me know what you think I should make using this yarn in the comments, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!